Hey guys, so the last video you saw the bracket I made for my Delta robot. And the purpose of the bracket is to hold the encoder for the shaft. And the encoder gets mounted to this thumb screw. And this backer thumb nut is basically the lock nut. And I wanted this bracket to be able to be adjustable because the encoder requires 1.5 millimeter distance between the magnet on the shaft of the motor that I still haven't attached yet. And it needs to be plus or minus half a millimeter. So this will give me the option to adjust it and then lock it in place. And then I'll have one on each motor like that. So the bracket consists of this stainless steel 11 gauge bracket I made. I tapped the hole in the top and the thumb screw. I pressed in the stainless steel stud and the standoffs for the circuit board. And then this backer nut is uh, also has a piece of hardware that's been pressed in, stainless steel. And these are aluminum here. And uh, that'll give me pretty good adjustment of the encoder board. So one thing I kind of wanted to go over was the difference between an incremental encoder and an absolute encoder. So I think by the name you can kind of guess. So an incremental encoder, sometimes referred to as a quadrature encoder, it gives you incremental data. So basically if you take 10 steps, it knows you took 10 steps. But if you turn the unit off and turn it back on, it doesn't know where it is. It only knows, you know, where it started from and where it currently is with the power on. Now, an absolute encoder, it will know where it is even when the power is removed and turned back on. And a good example of this are, are these uh, two calipers here. This is an older Mitutoyo caliper. This is a newer Mitutoyo caliper. And you see it says absolute there. So the older calipers used incremental encoders and the new calipers use absolute encoders. So they're both just as accurate. The only issue is you have to make sure to zero these every time you turn them on. So if you turn this off and you turn it back on, it thinks it's at zero. So it only knows how many quote unquote steps it took from the point it was turned on. So you have to close the jaws completely, re-zero it, and then you can go from there. But with these, if I turn it off, turn it on, it knows where it was. And the beauty of the absolute, not only in the situation where you move it to a position, turn it off, turn it back on, it still knows where it is. I can turn it off, move it, turn it on, it'll know where I moved it to. So, this is the beauty of absolute. And so, the encoders I'm using for the motors are absolute encoders. And I can get away with this because the motor isn't going to ever take more than, you know, 180 degree rotation. It can't even take 180 degrees because just the configuration of the robot. So if I just need to know the angle that the arm is at, that'll help me make sure I don't miss steps. I won't need limit switches to, you know, home the machine. So that'll work out pretty nice. So aside from the new encoder brackets, I've also decided to use this board that I found. And it's an open source board. It's an ESP32-EVB by Olamex. And what's really nice about it, it's got Ethernet or Wi-Fi. It's got the ESP32 board right there. And it has two relays. It has an SD card, IR blaster. And uh, yeah, I just think that's going to be a really nice board. And if I want, I can remove some of this stuff. And because it's open source, I can end up making my own board if I need, you know, to free up a few more pens. Also, this is the original Pixie that I was going to be using for detecting the object locations and colors. And one thing I really didn't like about it was this USB connector. You know, with, when I end up mounting it, I'm going to want to program it from time to time and access that. And that just takes up a lot of room. I have to have it backed up the way I want to mount it. So the new Pixie just came out and it this old one did 50 frames per second. This Pixie will do 60 frames per second updating. So that'll make the robot a lot more responsive. 
One thing I really liked about it is they decided to put the USB you know, right angle. And the one thing I don't really understand is, you know, you have five mounting holes on this board and only three mounting holes on this one. So it would have been nice if they, you know, added at least another mounting board, not a mounting hole here. But they also added the LEDs in the top, so I don't even need the ring light anymore. So, but yeah, making progress. So, okay, guys, well, I hope you liked that video. If you have any questions about my robot, go ahead and give me comment below. If you have any suggestions for something that you might think that I might not know about, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see you next time. Bye.